So this is the uh, the first of many topics I'm going to be covering for the pants, and I'm going to break it down blueprint topic by topic from the uh, the NCCPA blueprint. So here we go, pants renal part one. So the first thing we'll go over is nephrotic versus nephritic syndrome. So how do we remember um, what pertains to nephrotic versus nephritic syndrome? And this one I found a pretty easy way to remember it. So as far as nephrotic, when you see nephrotic, you can see the difference between nephrotic and nephritic is an O here and an I here. So when you see nephrotic, I want you to think of two things. The first thing I want you to think of is obviously an O. So think of words that have the letter O in them. Then the other thing I'll go over after. So when you see nephrotic, think of um, physical exam findings with the letter O and other things that you're going to see on labs and, and things like that. So first thing I want you to think of is proteinuria. Um, obviously, there's an O there. So you're going to see that in nephrotic syndrome where you're not going to see that as much in nephritic. So that's pretty relevant for nephrotic syndrome. Next, I know edema here in the United States, we don't spell with an O, but in uh in England, they do. It's I don't even know if they pronounce the O, but I know this is exactly how they spell it. And I've seen it other times. That edema is always spelled with an O. So this is another good way to remember nephrotic. You're going to see edema, O edema, if that's how they pronounce it. But another thing is hypoalbuminemia. That's another thing you'll find in your labs. And again, another O word here that has an O in it. And another thing too is frothy urine. And that's due to the proteinuria that you're going to see it makes the urine frothy. So again, think about all of those O's. These are all words with the either starting with the letter O or um, the letter O in them. And then oval fat bodies, also known as Maltese cross and something that you'll see in the urinalysis. And if you do take a biopsy specimen, it's going to be hypocellular in nature. So again, think of your O's. And then the other thing I want you to think of too, when you think of O, and I, this actually helped me even more than the O words, was when I think of O, I just think of a big fat stomach. And I think of like obesity, and I think of all the things that go along with obesity. Again, obesity starts with an O, and I just think of like a big stomach, and I start thinking of things like that. So when you think of O in nephrotic, um, you can think of a big stomach, and you can think of all the things related to obesity. So think of fatty casts oval fat bodies, hyperlipidemia, which is which is prevalent in nephrotic syndrome, and then edema. So you think of like a big swollen abdomen and all those things, hyperlipidemia. Obviously, if you're obese, there's a good chance you might have some high cholesterol, and then you think of the fatty casts and oval, oval fat bodies that you see in the urinalysis. So again, that's how I remember nephrotic. I never forgot that. I think that's a pretty good way to remember it. So now when we go to nephritic, there's not as much... Um, that you'll see in nephritic, there's not as much of a breakdown here. Like nephrotic, there's a bunch of different things you see in nephritic, not as much. But when I want you to think of when you see nephritic, think of that eye. And when you think of an eye, think of an eyeball and think of things you can see with your eyeball. So things you can see with your eye. So what can you see with your eye? Um, you can see hematuria. I'm sure we've all taken a urinalysis before. Somebody either had a, a UTI, had a renal stones, um, whatever it was, and you saw hematuria and you just saw a big cup of red urine. So that's something that you'll definitely see with your eye. Uh, hypertension, when you're pumping up the blood pressure cuff and you see they're hypertensive, that's another thing that you're gonna see with your eye. And then uh, just of note here, nephritic syndrome also has proteinuria. That's something that I mentioned in nephrotic, but it's less than 3.5 grams a day. So it's not really something that I listed here because when you see, uh, when you have like a vignette, they're gonna mention that they had however much uh, protein urea, but it's going to be over 3.5 grams a day. And that's how you know we're talking about nephrotic. So nephritic can have protein urea, but it's less than 3.5 grams a day. It's not as prevalent when they're talking about somebody with nephritic syndrome. So that's just something I wanted to make note of there. But, you know, that's important to to know, but also know that it's more specific to nephrotic syndrome. Okay, so now breaking it down to um, specific syndromes uh, related to nephrotic syndrome. So the primary etiologies, and these are some of the ones that I always came across, some of the ones that I found important, um, some of the ways that I remembered them over the years and still today do. So the first thing, uh, when we think about nephrotic syndrome, one of the main ones I still remember is minimal change disease. And when I think of minimal change disease, the first thing I see is mini. And when I think of mini, I think mini, minimal change disease. And mini to me is mini adults, mini humans, however you want to remember that. 
but just remember minimal change disease um, is most common in children in a vignette you're almost never going to see it in an adult it's almost always going to be in a child so just think minimal change disease think mini just think that this is going to be a mini adult that it's occurring in and you won't forget that the other thing that i remember for minimal change disease that's helping me remember the patho behind minimal change disease um, it's caused from a loss of negative charge in the basement uh, membrane which promotes proteinuria and again this is a nephrotic so the o proteinuria that's what's actually causing the proteinuria in minimal change disease so it has um, you're losing negative charge so loss of negative charge in the basement membrane promoting proteinuria the way i remember that is instead of thinking of minimal change disease i think of minimal charge disease because you have a loss or a minimal charge in the basement membrane which promotes proteinuria so minimal change disease i think of minimal charge disease and i think of the lack of charge in the basement membrane so that's a good way for me to remember that again something that i haven't forgotten moving on to some other nephrotic syndrome um, etiologies um, so you have membranous nephropathy when i think of membranous nephropathy i think of membrane membranous nephropathy i think of the word bran which makes me think of bran cereal and i think of the word mm, bran cereal and there's a few things that come to mind with bran cereal the first thing i think of when i think of bran cereal I don't know if you've ever seen the ads for uh, Kellogg's brand cereal and all the, the brand cereals. I always think of this older man eating brand cereal. That's just the picture I have um, when I think of somebody eating brand cereal. Maybe that's not the case for you, but that's what always comes to my mind. And it helps with this specific example because uh, membranous nephropathy or brand cereal is most common in men over 40. So that's also your first M in mm, brand cereal. And it's also a way when I think of brand cereal, I just think of an older guy eating brand cereal. And then, you know, um, that's also the most common demographic for membranous nephropathy. So we think of brand cereal, think of an older guy. And then another uh, way to remember it is mm, brand cereal. That's your first M, which would be men over 40. The second M um membranous nephropathy can be seen in patients with malaria so that's your second m in mm brand cereal and then your third m is going to be medications uh which is penicillinase that's one of the medications you can see it in but these are three of the common um things you'll see in a vignette when they're talking about membranous nephropathy so you see membranous nephropathy think of bran and then you think mm brand cereal brand cereal old guy eating brand cereal it's most common in men over 40. Mm, the second M would be malaria, and the third M in mm, brand cereal is medications. Um, so that's the way that I remember membranous nephropathy. Uh, another um, etiology you'll see in nephrotic syndrome is going to be focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. <clears throat> so this one, there's a few things you want to remember for this. Um, these are all the high yield things that I'm going over. Um, so focal segmental glomerulosclerosis occurs in the setting of uh, three things. So HIV, heroin users, and hypertensive patients. So how do I remember those three things from FSG and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis? So first, the F. How does F help me remember um, HIV? So F, I think of fornication, which, you know, is intercourse. And I think of HIV. How do you get HIV? Well, there's a number of ways, but... You know, one of the most common ways that we think of is having intercourse. So I think of um, the F in FSG, and I think of fornication. That helps me remember HIV. So what does the S stand for? S to me stands for shooting up, which makes me think of heroin. That's my second, um, you know, uh, common setting that you'll see with FSG and common in vignettes. And then finally. The last one, how do I remember hypertension? So the G for me stands for a couple different things in my mind. They're not the best, but it kind of works. Giant or grandiose blood pressure, um, which makes me think of hypertension. So breaking this down again, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, take the FSG. You remember F stands for fornication, HIV. S stands for shooting up heroin. And G stands for giant or grandiose blood pressure hypertensive. So remember those things because those are something you're going to see. That's something that you'll see in the um, the vignette. Um, the one I've noticed that I saw the most was HIV. That seemed to be pretty common. And then I remember 
I forget it was a YouTube video, but they used to say like FSG, HIV, it kind of rhymes too. So that's another way just to remember that too, that might work for you. Um, and then just a side note that I don't really have a way to remember, but it's something that you should know. Um, FSG is most common in African Americans. So that's something that's important. That's uh, often always, you know, also in the vignettes that you'll see. So moving on to Mary Little Nephritis. Um, there's a couple of things that you need to remember. The first one is IgA nephropathy. So with IgA nephropathy, you might see it called burger disease. I doubt it though. I don't really remember ever seeing it caused that, called that. Um, you're most likely going to see IgA nephropathy. So when I think of IgA nephropathy, I break it down. Um, first of all, it's the most common cause of acute glomerulonephritis, um, which is important to know. Um, and then I look at the I, the G, and the A in IgA nephropathy, and this helps me to remember some of the, the high yield points um, of IgA nephropathy. So the first thing, it most commonly affects young males. So how do I remember that from IgA? Um, IgA to me stands for infects guys always. Does it always infect guys? No, but it helps me remember that it's most common in young males. So IgA and IgA nephropathy to me stands for infects guys always. So I think it affects young males. Next thing, um, IgA nephropathy commonly occurs uh, 24 to 48 hours after either an upper respiratory infection or a GI infection. So how do I take IgA? Help me remember that. I take IgA and I remember infects gastric and alveoli. So infects gastric, infects your, you know, it's a GI infection. And then alveoli makes me think of the upper respiratory system. And I think of the lungs and that helps me remember the, um, uh, the fact that it infect, uh, I'm sorry, infects the, the upper respiratory system. So IgA stands for two things, infects guys always, helps you to remember it affects young males, IgA, um, infects gastric and alveoli. And that's a way that I kind of remember these, that it affects the, the upper respiratory system and, uh, or GI infection. And I know upper respiratory system is normally more like the sinuses and things like that, but alveoli helps me to kind of get there and remember, um, you know, obviously the alveoli is in the lungs, but it still helps me kind of get to upper respiratory infection because in the vignette, you'll see something related to, um, let's either, most of the time it's going to be a GI infection, but just remember these two things. It'll kind of help you remember the, um, the high yield, yield stuff for uh, IgA nephropathy. So <clears throat> the, um, the next, um, syndrome that I, you, you're probably going to want to know is either post-infectious or post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. I remember seeing it more as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis instead of post-infectious, and that's because it's most common after group A strep infection. Um, and so group A strep, group A strep, G-A-S, gas. Um, what do you get after you drink Coke? You get gas. So how does that help you with this? So a patient with uh, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis um, one of the classic findings you're going to, you're going to see is a uh, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola color urine. So you think of, um, you know, it's post-strep glomerulonephritis, group A strep, you think of gas. What do you get when you drink Coke? You get gas. So you think of Coca-Cola, uh, Coca-Cola, I cannot say that, color urine. Uh, the next thing I break down GAS again, and those letters help me remember, um, it's classically seen in adolescent boys, two to 14 years old. And then gas to me, think, I, I think of generally adolescent son. I know that's not the best sentence there, the best way to remember it, but it's something that I haven't forgotten. So I think, um, remember those two things. You think of gas, makes you think of the Coca-Cola color urine. And then gas is going to help you remember jet, generally adolescent son. So you're going to think of in the vignette, you're going to have like a two to 14 year old boy Coca-Cola color urine, um, and you're going to think of post, uh, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And another thing to remember, again, this, I don't necessarily have a way to remember this, but um, just remember facial edema is also a common physical exam finding. Okay, uh, so the next thing that's important to remember is good pastor's disease. And good pastor's disease, I think of the G and the P, which helps me remember some of the, um, the high yield stuff for this. Um, so a patient will present with glomerulonephritis and hemoptysis. So I think of the G and the P, very straightforward. 
glomerular nephritis, and pulmonary findings. So hemoptysis is your P, that's going to be your pulmonary findings, and then glomerular nephritis is the G, obviously. And uh, another thing to remember, um, the patho um, involves the anti-GBM antibodies against type 4 collagen of the glomerular basement membrane. Um, and I, I don't have a way to remember that, but I think that's important for you to know. So that's something that I just wanted to mention as well.